Hey ho peeps, Pablo Picanto here, giving you a quick overview over the Overwatch Defense Heroes. We'll start with Bastion. Bastion is a versatile hero who can switch between configurations to meet battlefield needs. He comes with 200 HP and 100 armor. In his configuration recon, Bastion is equipped with a submachine gun that is best used on mid-range. Left shift activates reconfigure and makes Bastion switch to configuration sentry. In that mode he is unable to move but brings out his 200 ammo minigun that deals devastating damage from close to midrange, losing some effectiveness at long range. This is a very useful ability for any defense situation, as you can quickly reduce the number of enemies closing in without having to reload. Watch your back though, in sentry mode Bastion has a weak spot on his back that does extra damage when hit. You can freely switch between configurations as reconfigure has no cooldown. If you take a look at Bastion's life points you will see it is separated into a white and a yellow part. The white part is standard HP and the yellow part is the armor. Armor points will decrease with half the value that HP would. As you can see here, one hit on the armor points counts for 4. As soon as the armor is gone, one hit counts for 8. Taking damage brings us to Bastion's E ability, Self Repair. Using that, Bastion heals himself for 25% of his life points in one second. Self-repair can be used in both configurations. You can hold the button down until you're healed completely. This has no cooldown, however you won't be able to move while healing. Bastion's ultimate, Configuration Tank, transforms him into a tank for 8 seconds. In this mode you will gain additional 150 armor and shoot exploding rounds with a white blast radius that destroy enemies with ease you will be able to fire about one of these per second. Because of this ultimate and the powerful sentry mode, Bastion is a hero you want in your defensive lineup. Next hero is Hanzo. He probably is one of the heroes that requires most skill to play well. He comes with 200 HP. Hanzo's weapon is the Stormbow. Damage and range of the arrows is depending on how long you hold down the fire button to charge the shot. The arrows are suited for long range, however you will have to take a certain bullet drop into account, depending on how long you charge your shot. Left Shift and E ability give your arrows special features. Left Shift makes the next shot a sonic arrow, that makes enemies in a certain area visible through any wall for you and your teammates. That will hold up for about 10 seconds, with a cooldown of 20 seconds. E makes the next shot a scatter arrow, which releases 6 more arrows after the impact that bounce from the walls and potentially hit multiple enemies. Hanzo's ultimate, Dragon Strike, fires an arrow that will travel for about 10 meters and then unleashes two spirit dragons that travel forward in a straight line, dealing devastating damage over time. Most enemies will die within a second of Dragon Strike. Notice that this ultimate will travel through every wall. You can basically fire it across the whole map. Hanzo's last ability, Wall Climb, enables him to climb any wall to reach higher ground. Using that you can attack enemies from places they won't expect. Though he is hard to master, Hanzo is a real killer once you get the hang of it. Junkrat is the next in line. Junkrat is very good at unleashing chaos on the field with countless explosives at his expense. He comes with 200 HP. The frag launcher fires grenades that explode when they hit an enemy or after a short time when they hit nothing. You can fire 5 at a time for a very long range. Left shift throws a concussion mine that you can detonate from the distance by pressing the secondary fire button. It deals a high amount of damage and launches opponents into the air. You can actually launch yourself into the air as well as it does no damage to yourself. This has an 8 second cooldown. You cannot place more than one mine at the same time. 
On E, a steel trap is placed that damages enemies walking into it and immobilizes them for 3 seconds. However, they will still be able to shoot while they are trapped. Rip Tire is Junkrat's ultimate and starts a remote control tire bomb that you take control of for up to 10 seconds. You can direct it to any location and detonate it when you seem fit. The explosion radius is very large and deadly, not only on direct hits. Be aware that the tire only has 100 HP and can be taken down by the enemy. Same goes for Chunkrat himself, as he will stand still while you control the tire, so make sure to only launch it from safe places. Last thing to notice is Chunkrat's passive ability Total Mayhem, that makes him drop 8 grenades when he is killed, that can kill Onkash's enemies walking past or trying to teabag you. Next hero in spotlight is Mei. She is especially useful to stop incoming enemies by slowing them down with her ice abilities. She comes with 250 HP. Mei uses her endothermic blaster to fire an ice beam that does constant damage over time, slowing enemies and freezing them for one second when hitting them for long enough. The beam does not hit an enemy until he is in a 10 meter range. Within that range it makes no difference how close you are, the damage over time remains constant. The blaster's secondary fire shoots icicles that do normal projectile damage, each using up 25 of the 200 ammo in the gun. They travel in a straight line and can still be effective at long range. Left shift activates cryo freeze and turns Mei into a block of ice, not being able to move or use abilities for 4 seconds. In that time she will be immune to damage and heal for a little more than half her HP. This has a 12 second cooldown. On E, Mei is able to raise an ice wall on the spot she aims at. The wall will block all players and projectiles for 4.5 seconds. 10 second cooldown on this one. Mei's ultimate ability, Blizzard, deploys a little drone that damages, slows and finally freezes enemies in a wide circle. Two seconds in the circle will freeze enemies for four seconds. The ultimate will be up for five seconds. Next up is Torbjörn. He is a good choice if you have to defend one certain position for a longer time. He comes with 200 HP. Torbjörn's rivet gun shoots long range projectiles on primary fire that deal a good amount of damage. On secondary fire, three rounds are consumed for a close range shotgun burst. Torbjörn has a second weapon, a forge hammer for melee attacks that does more damage than the normal melee. However, it does not attack faster. His passive ability Scrap Collector lets fallen enemies drop 25 scrap that Torbjörn can collect. For every 50 scrap he can drop an armor pack that gives him or any teammate 75 armor. Left shift lets you deploy a turret that automatically attacks enemies in its sight. You cannot place more than one at the same time. The turret is not very effective at first, but you can upgrade it to level 2 by hitting it with your hammer. On level 2 its HP are doubled to 300 and it will hit harder and faster. The turret is able to attack everything in a 360 degree radius, killing enemies in seconds. If it takes damage you can repair it using your hammer. Torbjörn's ultimate molten core will last for 12 seconds, give him 300 extra armor and increase his attack speed dramatically. In addition it will temporarily upgrade the turret to level 3 giving it an additional rocket launcher and 500 extra HP, making it extremely tanky and dangerous. Last but certainly not least is Widowmaker. She is a deadly sniper with very useful abilities to support her team. She comes with 200 HP. Her 30 round rifle Widow's Kiss is fully automatic and good for close to medium range. Holding down the secondary fire button will get out the rifle scope, switching the weapon to single shot sniper fire. Every sniper shot consumes 3 bullets. The damage of every shot will be, of course, determined by body or headshot. But there is also a charging mechanic that influences damage. 
Within one second a shot is charged to 100% power. If you don't give your weapon time to charge up every shot, it will do dramatically less damage. Left shift fires a grappling hook that is useful to evade attacks, get into better sniper positions or relocate after shooting. It will hold on to any solid surface but not to enemies. The hook has a range of about 20 meters. Cooldown is 12 seconds. E will launch a venom mine that detonates when an enemy gets close to it. It will deal some damage over 5 seconds, not too much, but quite nasty for low HP targets. Cooldown is 15 seconds. Widowmaker's ultimate infra sight does not deal any damage, but still is very useful. It will make enemies over the whole map visible for 15.5 seconds. Not only for Widowmaker herself, but also to all her teammates. So the whole team has a significantly easier time surviving an ambush or executing a surprise attack. Enemies will not be able to tell if the ultimate is active. That's it for the defense heroes of Overwatch. I hope there was a little bit of good information for you in here. If there was, leave a like and I will be happy to see you in the next video. Have a nice one and peace out.